All right, take us to the aircraft carrier. Now I'm taking us to the introduction of the book, and again, it's a spellbinding kind of you know thing here, and I don't want to give it away. But you're flying in the dark of night. You got to land the plane. Then you then you take the reader through what it's like to take off of that. Now, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. Three hundred feet on that carrier deck. Is that right? Yeah, so just you have three, about yeah. three hundred feet to take off. How do you train for taking off? Certainly, they make you um, do this on land before you do it on the ship. Yes or no? No, no, you what? don't. You no, you can talk about it, but there's nothing. There is nothing. There's that no can way to, tra to simulate it. Yeah. No, mm. no. So it's a very, and it's interesting. I was just having this conversation with somebody else. The F-14 in particular was, uh, had a couple of little idiosyncrasies in it because the nose gear would compress just a little bit uh, right before it, it yanked you. I mean, like a microsecond before it yanked you down that catapult uh, stroke. But you go from zero to almost 200 miles an hour in just under two seconds flat. Wow. So that, that acceleration is, you know, 10 times anything you'll ever feel on a roller coaster and your eyes go a little bit blurry and it just kicks you in the seat of the pants. And you have to be able to, in an instant, figure out if when you got to the end of that catapult, you've got good end flying speed, uh, i.e. you're going to continue to become airborne right. or you don't because that's a fork in the road. Right. If you don't have enough enough airspeed to get airborne, you're going to have to eject, and you have this much time to make that that split decision. Um, yeah, so it's crazy. Unbelievable. It is, it is, yeah, it's remarkable. All while it's trying a, to get your vision back. back. Because right, yeah, right. I mean, it's just insane. Okay, so then you get up in the you get up there and you got to come back, and you you describe it in the book as an exhilarating thing to take off. It's like the ultimate ride. But now coming back, it's terrifying for even this most seasoned of pilots, so certainly in the dark. And the scene you take sure. us to is landing in the dark. Here's what yeah, I want to know. How in yeah. the world do you keep m the mental control to not let your fear, which is there, but you mm -hmm. suppress it? That's what I was impressed by. It is not the absence of fear. It is the control the suppressing of fear that allow you to do that? What's it like? What's the pressure like in that moment? Well, it's extreme, obviously. And for, for a little bit of context for everybody listening, Navy and Marine Corps fighter pilots are actually the only fighter pilots in the world who will even land high-speed fighters on aircraft carriers at night. Nobody else in the world will do it because it's so risky. They'll mm -hmm. land helicopters at night mm -hmm. and other slower airplanes, uh, but they won't do high-speed fighters. And one of the things uh, that, that is such a crucial skill set to learn is how can you control that fear? And it doesn't mean that you ever want to put it away and ignore it or pretend like it's not there because fear is a good thing. It, it, it's what keeps you alive. It, it's, it's what keeps the hair on the back of your neck standing up and hopefully helps you from avoiding becoming complacent mm -hmm. or too comfortable. The, the challenge and the struggle in that though is that is managing that fear so that you can still work through it and get mm -hmm. the job done that you need to get done. Um, so I don't think there's a fighter pilot out there who could ever truthfully admit to not having at least a handful of landings at night where their legs weren't, weren't chattering or their teeth weren't chattering. Um, because you get into really extreme pitching deck conditions or, you know, there, there are, uh, un, unfortunately are the occasions that there are accidents, there are mishaps that happen. And unlike any other service, when you're deployed uh, in what's called blue water operations, which means you have no other place to land, you have to come back and land on the ship. Your only other option is, is ejecting. Mm -hmm. And there's no guarantee that you're going to survive that. And you've now, as a taxpayer, lost a $45 million asset. So it's a very suboptimal outcome. Um, so you have to figure out how do, you, how do you take that fear on board? How do you manage that fear and flip it? And there are ways that we can do this. And I'll, I'll share with you really quickly. One of it is, and, and from even a leadership perspective, it goes both ways, outside of the cockpit and within the cockpit. We have to take all of this noise, all of this chaos, all of this this fear and clarify it and clarify that complex environment and make it simple. So here's what we do in our cockpits. The only thing that we're responsible for from a, a memorization uh, perspective, we'll have emergency procedures that may be five steps or 10 steps 
and we call those bold face procedures. So those are the things that we have to be able to have memorized. So it doesn't matter if you're hanging upside down or whatever, you should be able to spit that off in your sleep while you're brushing your teeth, juggling, polishing your boots, anything. But everything else that we do, all of a sudden coming close into the boat, it all nets down to three things. And we keep it to three things because from, from a, an overwhelm or a multitasking perspective, all of the data and all the science really shows that really good multitaskers can only focus on about five things at any one given period of time, plus or minus two. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we worst, yeah, so we worst case scenario that in, in essence by default by keeping it to three things. So, you know, airborne, it's aviate, navigate, communicate. If you do those three things in a row, you should, you should be okay. Mm -hmm. When you come into the boat, when you, when you get to about three quarters of the mile and, and, you know, at night you can't even see that thing hardly, it's pitch black, you're sensory deprived, you focus on three things and we call it meatball, lineup, and angle of attack. And the meatball is your lens that lets you know if you're high or, or too low on the glide slope. Lineup, you need to be able to have your lineup uh, down exactly because unlike on a runway, you know, if you start drifting, you can, you can correct for that on a runway. But when your hook engages a wire, your momentum is bringing you that way. You can't correct for it. So you have to have that. Mm -hmm. And then your angle of attack, it's your airspeed. If you do those three things and we're trained and we go over this over and over again, it doesn't matter if somebody's screaming in the background, you've got bells and whistles going off and all this stuff. Unless you just, if, unless you have to make the decision to eject, if you focus on those three things, you should be able to effect a safe landing. And everything else you'll figure out and deal with once you stop. But in that, you know, in that five to seven to 10 second period, it's focusing on the most important work. So part of that skill set of that fighter pilots end up being so strong uh, with, and astronauts and even SEALs as well, is your ability again to clarify the complex, to focus on the most important work and let the rest of it go for now. You, you can come back and readdress mm -hmm. it, but, and that's where people get so tangled up. That's where we get so much uh, overwhelm and burnout and distraction within businesses is that we're trying to do so many different things that we dilute our power and we end up being average at best or not good at, the most important things. Mm -hmm. So the focusing is, is huge. That's how you, what, and, and I know this is a long explanation, but it's really critical. When you focus on that most important work, what it allows you to do is take action. Mm -hmm. And taking action is what conquers fear.